Hey, it's Rich, welcome back. Uh, today's video, we have a 1998 B36 TC, which we sold to the current owner a while back. B36 T is a unique airplane, it's got the barren wing. This airplane's not for sale, but we are gonna show you how an older autopilot integrates with some updated avionics. And we're gonna go out to French Valley and have some breakfast. And so we're in heading mode now. And 
And we have heading on the autopilot here. But if we wanted to go to GPS steer, meaning the autopilot gets its info directly from the GPS, we'd have to hit and hold heading, and then that would turn the heading mode into GPS steer mode, which is a little confusing because normally you're in nav mode when you're flying a course. Um, if you want the autopilot to capture the auto, the uh, altitude, altitude pre-select, you set the altitude, and then you have to push and hold the altitude button for it to activate the altitude pre-select function. If you want to climb in something other than a pitch, which is off of the hold autopilot head, you have to push and hold vertical speed at the vertical speed. Now you can descend or climb on a vertical speed instead of just at pitch. So it's like a another set of buttons you have to push. Really nice to have, but it's a little more work, but it's very capable. And I, I think once you get used to it, it's pretty easy to, to manipulate the autopilot. So it's a nice uh, nice integration. And again, like this autopilot's doing well. It's an old autopilot, but it's, you know, it's holding altitude really good. It's holding the heading really well. And, you know, obviously a real workload reduction. Um, and this would be obviously a, now this, this may have been done before they certified the EFC 500 autopilot. I don't know why they didn't put the autopilot in, but I think that's an upgrade that's available for this. So, uh, you know, in a nutshell, uh, these older autopilots can be integrated into 500, GTN 750. It's just gonna be a little more complex when it comes to button pushing. Like solid overcast June gloom. Crazy. Almost for, I mean, it's all day long and it's been like a month. Normally, we get June gloom in the morning and, and it burns off, you know, early afternoon and we get some sunshine, but man, not, not in this uh, this year, that's for sure. And, and it's all the way, too. You can see it's all the way to like the Banning Pass, Imperial Valley, uh, Inland Empire, is all, it's all socked in. 70, load procedure, that's the RNAV, yeah, tick move, load and activate, uh, here, now here's what I was talking about, we want to go into nav mode, GPS steer, but now we're in heading mode, what I do is push and hold, heading and it takes the heading mode off and goes into GPS steer. Now it's, now the autopilot is flying uh, directly from the GPS, not through the uh, CDI. And tick move is going to be 4600. Back to our map. We're probably going to have to do a course reversal based on this. Back to heading mode. It's uh, 800 overcast, so we'll be doing the our nav 1.8. The reason I changed that is I don't, you know, it's going to save time to not go out and do the procedure turn and come back. So what I'll do now is uh, back to the flight plan. Okay, so let's go ahead and heading 090 and. So I go here, uh, altitude 5,000, then I hold altitude, that's going to capture it, and then I hold vertical speed, I dial in my vertical speed, going down. Okay, so that's how you manipulate the autopilot through the, GF, the G500, so you can be more specific instead of just using pitch mode and no altitude hold. All right, now we're going to go back here. 
We're going to go to uh, procedure, and we're going to activate vectors to final. Five thousand. It should be capturing altitude. There it goes altitude. So this autopilot, you know, with the in this configuration with these controls and integration works really good. So as I mentioned, that's a really good autopilot. Kind of some double entry. You have two things to consider. You have the head, the autopilot head, and then you have the controls on the G500. Like I said, I think once you get used to that, it's pretty nice. So, you know, it's pretty good. Approach, climb to 2500. A minimum here. Uh, 1600. Now, on the missed approach procedure on this airplane, you know, with the more advanced autopilots, we're used to hitting a go around button, which sequences the missed approach procedure and pitches the flight director up. In this configuration, we don't have that. So you really need to be prepared on what you're going to do with the autopilot. Uh, you'd have to disconnect the autopilot. Get the command bars into the up mode while you're cleaning up the airplane. And then reconfigure the autopilot for a climb and GPS steer for the, uh, for the missed approach procedure. And I think you'd activate the missed approach on the GTNs. We're in heading mode. 090. That's going to be outside of Dan now. Missed approach procedure, that's one real weakness that this has because if you have to do an approach in actual, it, it's a pretty busy uh, process at a high workload time anyway. But it'd be pretty busy with the autopilot. That's something if you had this configuration, you really need to practice and get proficient at it before you did it in actual condition. So we got a glide path, we're locked on in approach mode now. And we are. Uh, About two and a half from Dan. So the key here will be seeing if the autopilot captures this glide slope. Go ahead and put the gear down. Doesn't look like it's going to do the glide slope. That is. So it did capture the glide path. Approach altitude is 5,000, so I'm going to set 5,000. So again, you know, in approach mode, autopilot captured the course and the glide path, and it's doing as good a job as a GFC 500 would do. And we just have to uh, prepare for missed approach. Now the weather, I think, is 800 overcast, and we can take this down to like 260 uh, L. So the missed approach altitude, we're going to get, it. we should have no problem. So we won't be doing a missed approach on this one. Gears down, flaps are set where they want. Pulls on the right tank. That back. Everything looks good. We got a thousand two minimums. Hey, autopilot's coming off. Very nice, very impressive. The way that autopilot worked. Coming up, I got three green. No landing flaps. Big bird right there on the final.
Okay, we just finished up breakfast at the French Valley Cafe here at French Valley Airport in, uh, I think it's Temecula is the city. Really uh, good breakfast, great airport. Uh, I really like this airport. Been here many times. And uh, the 98 Bonanza B36 TC, that was a great flight. And it was an IFR flight. We used that old autopilot KFC 150 with the new G500 and GTN 750. And once you figure out how those buttons work, it actually was very, very nice. It worked really well. Shot the approach down, coupled. Um, as I mentioned, the go around could be a little bit of a, a challenge, but. You know, I'd stick with that autopilot. I don't think I'd spend a lot of money upgrading it. If it had issues, I would probably just go to the GFC 500 at that point. But the way it's working right now, I wouldn't touch it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.